Do, how do should we start? Or... How should we start? Uh, right, I can start by saying shout out five on five. Hey! Oh, hey. shout out to five on five. Shout out to five yes, on sir. five. Come on. Yeah, come man. On. They started a basketball podcast, the best basketball podcast out here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I may have already yes, made a guest appearance. And apparently, you guys oh, are actually, yeah. oh, shit. Oh, so, man. You know? <laughs> my, my bald knowledge is going to be so dated. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, for, for, I was telling them, bro. I told Gouled or whatever on the podcast. And I was like, listen, man, next time when you get these other guys on, it's going to be the worst for you because they're just all Celtics fans. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Plus, all bias. <laughs> I don't, I don't even watch basketball. I just keep up with narratives now. Oh, like, you're going to love it. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. Same, same, same. <laughs> same I might, I might have to hit my Googles before, before I come on. Yeah, no, sh- sh- shout out to 5 on 5. Another group of brothers just trying to make it. So, you know, just yeah, go make- follow them. Just throw them some love. Facts, facts. All the info's on our IG page, so make sure you check them out, okay? But let's let Big Fish take it from here. Ladies and gentlemen, all across the world, welcome to 11 on 11 Tuesdays. I just want to give a big shout out to the big three up top. Arf, a.k.a. Two Leg Taco, a.k.a. Brexit Football. This is Tiki Taka Football, Guardiola Football. Next, Ace, Talent ID, yeah? He was never I- that good. He was never that guy. I'll be honest with you. Next up, our big man up top, Mo Salah. Oh, him. I got time today, brother. <laughs> I got time today. Every Tuesday. Bro, the Champions League TikTok page is sick. When you guys have TikTok, nah, it's crazy they're so sick. Cringe edits. to me. They're so cringe. Nah, they're, but they're, what are they doing? their edits are sick, bro. Wait, nah. wait, 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 Mo. How do you know if you don't have TikTok? When I used to, mm. have, I used to have it on my Android. Oh, so you did I, have it. I did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Arv, has it, hasn't Android. he been acting like he never had it? Mo's the type of guy oh. he wants to look cool in cameras, man. He'll always hide things, but he'll never be true to himself. <laughs> Firstly, bro. Mo, I yeah? would not have this. Personally, I would not have <laughs> this. Mo, Personally, Mo will tell the Mo I would not behind have this. closed doors. We'll watch all the animes, but we'll be like so unproud of not watch of watching it. No, He'll no, hide no, it no. From it's not, it's, I nah, don't like the stereotype huh? of all black people are a watch anime. I don't want the stereotype. I don't want this Ooh, all black this, all black that. From? Who cares? Who yeah. cares? Do you want to do it? Who cares that's, what people that's think? All I'm saying. That's I, all you, I'm saying. You guys know me. I would give a shit. I want everyone to know I watch One Piece. I want everyone to know, know I watch Naruto. I want everybody to watch. I, I watch Attack on Titans. Like, Bleach is back. Damn. I don't give a damn. I don't even watch normal TV, show, TV shows anymore. It's anime all day, every day. Gang business. There's none of this nonsense. Mo, I no, you Mo, I get you. Mo, I get you now. Mo, I get you now. <laughs> what the hell is that? <laughs> Shut up, right, yeah, boys, boys. No, no, no. Back to football. Back to football. Yeah. Back to football. Listen, right. I think I think I have a question. I want to start off so this conversation can be inclusive. Mo, this is an unbiased question. Let me clarify. I'm not talking about Arsenal. I'm sorry. It's it's not, not, I can't even are. land. Well, you are. Let me land. Let me land. No, now you Listen. know how I feel. You're not landing. I'm not talking about Arsenal. <laughs> I didn't even ask my question. You don't know what it's it about. Matter. I I know exactly. It's about Arsenal. I'm not talking about Arsenal. Buddy, nah, can you, you give me a chance? Can you can you at least uh, let me attempt? No, no. <laughs> my question is, um, it's about Arsenal. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. But listen, I've seen the not outrage, but I've seen <laughs> the response to the Arsenal fans' enthusiasm about our placing in the table after, is it nine games or ten games? Nine? Nine. Uh, Nine. Nine right now. Nine Nine games, right? So, Mo, are Arsenal fans going overboard with our reaction of being top of the table after years of mediocrity and tragedy? Is the reaction right now, are we going overboard? Because my take on it is, I think Arsenal fans, for once, aren't going too crazy it's other people telling us that we're going to win the league or we think we're going to win the league while i haven't seen too many people jump on that wave so i just want to know like from from your point of view is is this like an okay response like is this something that you would be doing if chelsea was top after nine games and you're ahead of city like is this like an appropriate response is it overboard like what's your take No that comment. isn't even about Arsenal. That isn't even about Arsenal. I'm asking about, like, 
if Chelsea was top after nine games, like would you be as happy nah, as we are now? Bro, I'm, I'm very, I'm very, I'm very. I'm are, very are we, are we like, overdoing it? I don't feel like we're I'm overdoing. Not, I don't, don't feel like I'm overdoing. It. Not talking about Arsenal in particular because uh, no comment on that side of things. Um, <laughs> I as I when it comes to Chelsea, I'm very like I feel like unless I really believe that we can win it. I don't say much. Like, I think a good example is the Champions League. I didn't say anything until we got to a certain point where I went, no, we're winning this thing. But like, mm-hmm. before that, I'm like, there's certain points in the season, I just don't say anything because I don't think we're good enough to win it necessarily. Yeah. I'll have us in contention, stuff like that. I'll be positive about that because I think, oh yeah, we have a good enough squad for that. But in terms of winning mm-hmm. something, a competition or whatever, I'm very pessimistic about it until mm-hmm. it like it really looks like we were just dominating everything that comes our way. No, no, I, I, rem- I remember you with the Champions League. You called it like I think in quarters. You said we're in the Champions League, we're winning the Champions League, and then it actually happened. So I hear mm-hmm. that, but just I don't know, or if maybe you can correct me. I don't think Arsenal fans are going overboard. It's other people telling us that we think we're going to win the league when, in fact, majority of people haven't said that. We know who City is. Yeah. I feel like it's kind of like some weird reverse psychology. Am I off? I'm not saying we're going over the top, but yeah, we are a little bit over celebrating right now because it is nine games. You think so? But the thing is, like, we're over celebrating. No, but the thing is, we're over celebrating because of what people have said about us. In the beginning of the season, people said, we're not going to make Europe. We don't spend right. You know, oh, we're, we dropped out of top four again. We're going to do that again. In fact, we're even considered title contenders. We're, that's a whole underdog story, you know? We're still being mm-hmm. disrespected. Every game, like Mo said, we weren't showing, we weren't as dominant as we should have been. You know, there's the performances aren't elite, like like the Man City issue, you know? We don't, we don't, we're not there. We're not there. It's nine yeah. games in. We don't beat the, the big teams. Yeah. We don't beat, that's another one. We don't beat the big teams. You beat Liverpool, you beat well, Tottenham factual. back to back. That's, I think every Arsenal fan deserves to celebrate. But like, you're right though. It's not guys like me who are crazy, stupid Arsenal fans who go crazy. It's other guys who are saying, oh, these Arsenal fans are overreacting. Every Arsenal fan I know didn't say we're going to win the league. Not even now. Like, we're still optimistic about it. Like, we're... Bro, we're gonna, I feel like this like is the most normal player. the fan base has ever been. Like, Probably, it's just a bunch yeah. of, like, a bunch of guys supporting their club and happy that they're winning it, they're, that they're up the top. But I don't feel like yeah. we're overdoing it. But yeah. We, we've, said, we've, we've learned from our past, like, to set our, our expectations yeah. low. You know, we're not, <laughs> we're not going to do that to ourselves. You know, every time, even, like, Europa League, top four, I say, bro, we're not going to make it just to make sure our expectations are low so we don't expect too much. But yeah, but I hear you right now. Like, it's not, it's I not think, over the top, bro. I think yeah. regardless of Arsenal or, or not Arsenal, whoever's top of the league, you should be enjoying being top of the league. Saying you're going to win is a different thing, but saying, yeah, we're top of the league and being happy isn't a bad thing. Enjoy it. Yeah. Like, you're, that's yeah. Just, that's, as a fan, you should. Like, nine games into the league being top of the league, regardless, you guys, Union Berlin, should be oh, ecstatic. You know what I mean? No, you're mm-hmm. dissing. You're dissing. That, that's I'm not dissing, bro. I'm being dead you're serious. Dissing. I'm being dead serious. No, you're dissing. No, no, no. I, 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 hear that. I hear that. I hear that. I hear that. I hear that. You want to know why? No, Ar- you, the way, the no, way no, we but, view Arsenal and the way he views Arsenal is different. I'm not saying I, it about Arsenal. I'm saying... No, but I, I, most, honestly, most comparison. Teams, okay, no. The reason why I see Union Berlin is the only teams that actually come to my head was Arsenal and Union Berlin. I didn't even remember who was top of the league in Serie A. I don't remember who's top of the league. Fran- I'm assuming France is PSG, and they're always there. So for them, it's a bit different. But like I'm talking about like teams that aren't always top of the league. And now I'm looking it up. Serie A, Napoli should be ecstatic too, being top of the league. Like you should be happy being in these positions. That's cool. But every you that comparison to Union Berlin is so unfair. Union Berlin didn't beat Bayern. Mm-hmm. Arsenal beat people who are title contenders. Tottenham, Liverpool. I mean, you guys didn't beat City. Fair enough. They, 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 you guys didn't beat City. No one, no one, no one else did. <laughs> like, let's be honest. Like, nobody's beating yeah, but City that, in general. I'm not comparing like, them for that reason. I'm just saying. Fact, I think, I think, I think you took it overboard. I think you took it over. I think that's not what he meant. But it's very easy to yeah, misconstrue if you know Mo. But let's just give him the benefit of the doubt for today. All right, it's fair, not even benefit. Let's give him the benefit. No, Fam, Mo. You're top, just be happy. You're top of the league. That's all I'm saying. No, Mo. What we're saying is you're smart enough to leave a snide compliment, which is what that sounded like. But but if if you're telling us, if you're telling us that's not what it is, then that's not what it is. But but I I have no more comments about Arsenal. I'm not making slides. We're going to talk about about Arsenal today. Believe me. You see, no, no. You know what it is? You know what it is, Ace? When we're on the top, he doesn't want to talk about it. When we're doing mm-hmm. well, we're oh, doesn't want to talk about it. But when we're on the d- when we're low, when we're down, when it's Arteta out, most lucky Dodger. Out, out, most most, most lucky Dodger. No, no, no. Believe me, we're gonna talk about Arsenal today. Arsenal, Liverpool, Arsenal. Okay. The Same shit things they said about Muhammad Ali. It's crazy. Call him a Dodger <laughs> so, back yo. then too. <laughs> wow. <laughs> he admit it. He's he admits it. It's cool. Um. So yeah. Let's talk let's, about the game. 
a Star Wars game, man. So in my opinion, this felt like the same game that we go into at Anfield every year and we get smoked because we always try to battle them. We always try to, you know, go sword for sword, shield for shield. Like it's like a huge gunfight. And Mm -hmm. this is the first time we've won it in so long that it's I don't know. It just feels like it, f- it feels like, you know, this was a big step in 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 Arsenal's road to glory again. Like, for mm. example, like I was saying before about the United game, I would rather have won that game and lost. two. I don't want to say lost two before because that sounds crazy, but I almost feel that strongly just because I want to make statement wins. I want to do things that that set benchmarks and allow us to build on stuff and we can have something to look back and say yeah we did that mm-hmm. so i think this liverpool game after years of getting smoked by them at anfield and and going toe to toe with them and coming out on top is just just such a big statement big big yeah. statement and everybody played well i don't think anybody really had a bad game you know it was, it was a confident game it was an aggressive game but yeah no it was good yeah man um one thing i do want to talk about arsenal like in these big games like fair enough we haven't beat liverpool in a while but like what well, I'm, I'm trying to look for any negatives. And the one negative I could find from the Arsenal-Liverpool game is that in these big games, Arsenal are not able to control leads. I know, Mo, I don't want to get into the whole dominating games. Yes, we didn't dominate Liverpool, but we played well against them. The Tottenham game, I think we, we were more dominant, deserved the win, like 3-1 win. But against Liverpool, it was like, I believe, we again, we scored first and then we gave up with the lead. We weren't really controlling where they had chances as well. So... It was it was hit or miss, but like I think this Arsenal win was more Liverpool being bad than Arsenal being dominant, or Tottenham was the other way around. But but yeah. it was end of the day we got the dub. But but yeah. there's so much to talk about. And honestly, like Arsenal. Let's, let's, let's stay it. on Arsenal, then we'll go to Liverpool. Let's just stay right, on Arsenal because there's, there's a couple of things I want to bring up for Liverpool later. Go ahead. But, uh, Arsenal first thing I want to talk about uh, Bukayo Saka, Bukayo Saka stepping up, taking the penalty. Everybody talks shit. Everybody still talks shit, even after he scored the penalty. They still like to bring up the Euro final. Big moments, big games. How old is he now? 20 years old and stepping up in these big moments. That's my guy. That's my star boy. People want to talk about Gina Sancho. Where is he? Where is he? <laughs> Where is he? Where is he? No, no, no. That's my guy. This is, I was thinking about this not too long ago. Bro, Like this, the hype behind Gina Sancho is ridiculous. The guy went to the Bundesliga, scored a couple goals, scored a couple nice goals, and came to the Premier League and shut it up. And people still want to say he's better than Saka. What? I don't think anybody honestly believes that. Now you can't be sane and believe no, that. There's no I got way. Shit on. I got shit on. I got shit on social media. I got shit on it everywhere on TikTok, Instagram, maybe Facebook. I, I, God knows where, where. Everybody destroyed me for it. Where are you now? Where are you? Where are you? Saka is Energy. clear. Jaden Sancho clear even Southgate knows that he's not coming back to Qatar don't even think about it Sancho Saka is your is your dad he's your dad that's it that's it Saka uh, Sancho you're finished I'm sorry I don't know why I'm going off on Sancho but uh, it's just it's done it's done I hate I don't want to hear that conversation again Saka is clear of Sancho it's disrespectful fam the only people we want to talk with we chat with for Saka is Foden Foden and them man that's it. Foden, maybe Mbappe and them man there. But other than that, I don't want to hear James Sancho's name again with Bukayo Saka. Please and thank you. That's all I wanted to say. Um, Saka, I feel like I feel like he's had to carry the team for so long that I feel like the weight never really got to him. But he was able to not have to do everything himself this season. And I'm glad because he's able to show different parts of his game and his mentality now. He didn't have a great start. But scoring two goals against Liverpool is going to do the world for his confidence. There's five right. games left until yeah. the World Cup. So he's able to, you know, get on a good run before he hopefully goes and maybe even starts at the World Cup. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm glad that he caught those numbers because, you know, that'll just help him mentally. Um, the rest of the team, I think everybody kind of played well. I think the star for me that game was probably Martinelli. Just mm-hmm. He just had a different energy. And I guess also there's, clear there's, Sancho. Sorry, oh, go ahead. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Say, say, say that again. Say that again. Say that again. Also clear of Jaden Sancho. Just, just who, to make who, sure. who? Martinelli. Martinelli. Clear. Martinelli. Clear. Clear. Not even close. <sighs> this is Brother, tough. I agree, but it's close. tough for me to say. Listen, I, I got energy. If you want to bring it up, let's do it. Well, lie. I don't know. I just, I. This is something about uh, this Arsenal top of the league. I, I'm just apt. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, though. But, um, yeah, no, Martinelli's a standout. But I think 
the real hero just for this game and for this season is Arteta. And I mm. think, you know, hindsight is always, always 2020. You'll able you're able to see better when you look at the past. Everything else will make sense. So um I'm thinking of Arteta and his story, his career at Arsenal and how a lot of the time, obviously, he didn't have the players he wanted, but I don't think he was fully understanding of what he wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Now he's at a point in his Arsenal career where all the roles and what he wants are very well defined. And the proof of that is that random, not random, but. But players can come into the team and look like stars. Jesus came in and looked like a star. Saliba yeah. looks like one of the best center backs in the league, maybe even the world, um, because the roles are very well defined. You know what you have to do. What he's done for the back four, that is nothing less than sensational. Putting Tomiyasu at left back to block Salah from cutting in and 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 that way you have a player who's quicker to attack Salah's left foot is mm -hmm. genius. We're playing with four center backs, technically. Yeah. White, but White Tomiyasu is technically a right back, center back, Gabriel and Saliba. And it's mm -hmm. working perfectly, you know? Mm -hmm. The midfield balance. There were party he had parts last season where he looked shaky. He looks like one of the best midfielders in the league. Shaka, huge turnaround in his career. Odegaard, sensational now that he's at camp. So a lot of things got figured out. And it looks like um everything came together at the right time. Now it's all about how long can this go for? Mm -hmm. Because the the season's long. We actually got a game off because they postponed one of our our Europa City games, game. which which only yeah, helped yeah, us, yeah. right? And the City game, which only helped us. Yeah. So I feel like it still feels like last season where we we're playing once a week, but once we get into like the real trenches of the season, those February March months, then we're gonna see how tough this team really is. I agree. I agree. And also, there's still that thing where, like, fair enough, we say about a parte and like we're short on midfield. I think we're short on many positions, especially up front. Like Jesus and Enketia, it's good. But like if we lose Jesus, we lose a big chunk of the way we play. And also if we lose Saka Martinelli, we don't really have the quality we can bring off the bench that can match their quality, right? So like that's the only thing with Arsenal. Like we are maybe one or two injuries away from everything turning around, honestly. But at the moment, it's not too bad. But hey, the center backs are playing fullbacks. I wouldn't mind seeing some people play other positions because it's working right now. So people mm. playing out of position and still doing a job. It's working. It's working. So yeah, maybe maybe yeah. I shouldn't be too worried as much. I don't know because just the last thing before we go to Liverpool is, um, bro, I don't like this backup keeper, Matt Turner. Um, I, I agree, when, but I don't want to be too soon. No, to I really don't like. I'll be honest. I really, yeah. really don't like him. Like, I, I don't. Like I don't. Him. I don't think he's very good. I know. Plus, he's he had not, an incident like, with you. Yeah, the incident with you. <laughs> no, I'm not really not like that. I even try to bring that up, but like, uh, with the whole the thing is, I was talking about this. I forgot with who. But, like, I think we've been so privileged with Ramsdale, man. Like, we're just so used of his greatness of passing and great goalkeeping, shot stopping. Where Matt Turner is a guy who literally came He doesn't from look nothing. confident. He doesn't look confident. He doesn't look comfortable on his feet, which we really need for our buildup. And this is a guy who literally came from playing from an MLS side who's played against nobodies, for being completely honest. So, I don't know. I do think he needs time to transition to the facing, like, good... He needs, you're, you're, he needs time to what? He needs time to like learn. Learn. Okay. Like, yeah. You know? Facts. But, but I don't know. I, <laughs> wait, what did I say? What did I say? No, no, you're good. You're good. Nothing. Okay, nothing. All right, all right, all right, all right. Say less, say less. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I, I'm, I don't want to be too soon on that turn. I don't want to be. Yeah. It's his first yeah. season. He's, he, hasn't, he doesn't get PT like that. He's our backup keeper for a reason. So, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, I don't want to be too harsh. Question for Go you guys. Uh, Octos. The Jesus. Uh, which eventually is soccer goal, the Jesus penalty. Penalty, yes or no? Uh, it's a very, very soft one. I wouldn't give it. Um, I wouldn't give it. I would not give that. But right. we got it. I'm not, I'm not mad. Fair I'm not, I'm not so soft. It is, but it was, it was soft. Like, Jesus did play it off well, for being honest. But, like, there was many times in previous games, and also in this game, where Jesus was fouled in the box and it was completely ignored. So I agree. But, I, so, I agree but, with that. But that, but that specific one was softer. Yeah, I'll, I'll ju then, the way I judge it is is if the other team got that penalty, would I be raging? If the answer yeah. is yes, then yeah. I would be raging if that was a penalty going against us. Yeah. I would and be my absolutely last question, raging. My last question about the game, the Gabriel incident, was that a pen or not? No. Which no, Gabriel, you want to know why? Me? Can you remind it's me? The, it's the handball one, one kick the crosses. One, yeah. Oh. That is not a handball. Because if you watch the clip again, it hits his chest. 
then it hits his hand. But so I don't think that's a natural handball. position too. Like it's no. It, if the, if the a guy kicks a ball at your chest point blank range and then it ricochets off your chest, it glides off your chest and goes to your hand. I'm not that. I don't think that's handball. I've seen many calls go against that too. So they're. Fair enough. I'm not, the were, were you, I'm ahead, not gonna say I don't anything. think either of them I, are pens. I, I was gonna say, I'm not going to say anything that it is or not, but the rule is if your hand's in unnatural position, it's a pen. Regard, I'm not saying it is in this case or not. That's up to the discretion of the, the ref yeah. or whatever. Mm-hmm. I'm just asking your opinions. I'm just saying the actual rule in this case, it's not that it's it's a flat out no, no, no handball because his hand was mm-hmm. out in an area that it shouldn't have been. Yeah. It works if you're yeah. saying chest and then his arm was next to his side, then 100% the rule would be no pen because his yeah. arm's next to his side. You can't do anything. But where yeah. it was yeah. is the argument. But anyways, yeah, yeah. pen or not. That was, that was the, basically the question. Yeah. Was, the again, answer. like I've seen, I've seen so many pens not given for the same call. Exactly. So it's, they're, they're being consistent with that one. I'll give them that. But anyways, let's talk about Liverpool, man. There's a lot to cover with Liverpool. Okay. Can, I think, can, can, I, can I ask a question? So um, Mo, mm-hmm. you there? Yeah. I'm, I'm talking about Mo Salah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> good one, good one. <laughs> well done, well done. Yeah, that this was. This guy is anonymous. I don't even know if he's playing sometimes. Mm. This mm. is the guy who was undoubtedly the best player in the Premier League last season, and since last the start of last calendar year, well, this calendar year, twenty twenty two. He's been like off of it, and it's been disguised by the fact that he had such great numbers in the beginning. But now it's getting into like Bruno territory where mm-hmm. if you don't put numbers up, then your game, you're not offering much more than that. And it's yeah. just getting very, very, very bad. Your best players are supposed to help you. Not when times are good, when times are tough. And this is the worst Liverpool has looked in a long, long time. And this is the guy who just got a new contract. You sacrificed your other best winger, one of the best players you've ever had. People used to say Sadio Mane, best player in the world, right? You sacrificed Mm. him to keep Salah. And what has that gave you? And Mm. I know there's a lot of other problems with the team, but your best players are supposed to be the, the one constant that you have. You shouldn't have to think about them too much. Like, for example, for us, when Saka, we always know he's having a good game or an okay game at the worst. At the worst, because he's our best player. We count on him. Bro, for example, for Chelsea, Thiago Silva, I think he's one of Chelsea's best players. He's a constant. He had a couple mistakes in the first two to three, uh, the first like five games uh, mm-hmm. of his Chelsea career. He had a couple mistakes. Ever since, flawless. You can count on it. Salah, yeah. you're not you're not reliable. This is a problem. Mm. Thing is, you you did mention like there's also a lot of other players who are part of the problem, and I feel like Salah is reflecting off that because strictly but he shouldn't. Basically- he's the best. He's, he's supposed the best, to be the best. But like, but like he doesn't look like the same person because he's not playing the same game. Like freaking Klopp plays a 4-2-4 where Salah is like far, far on the right side where Nunes is drifting in, Jota. Like it's a 4-2-4. And he, I think he had only one pass in the final third that entire 90 minutes. He had like less than 20 touches or something like that or around 20 to 30 touches from a winger. Like, so I don't know. Like I do think, I'm not trying to make excuses for Salah, but... The system right now is not it for him. You know, I don't think no, that's him, and Nunes, him, no, him and Nunes are not mashing well enough. Also, because I, even... I don't think Nunes is the problem because Nunes hasn't played every game. Sal is just not engaged. He's not engaged from the from He's not getting first minute to 90th well. minute. Then Listen, go find I'm, the I'm ball. Go find I'm the ball. You. You, yeah, but, you're enough of a player to where you can do what you want to some degree. And the coach won't yell at you too much. Ace, Come if you're on! This great of a player, and you're getting one pass in the final third. Come on! Man. It's your fault. You go find the ball. You go yeah. find the ball. When Ronaldo I, I, doesn't I, I, get I'm the sure. ball, he goes and looks for it, even at the detriment of the team. And you know what? That maybe that's not what he's supposed to do. But at least you're trying. Mm-hmm. At least you're trying. You can't just rely on the system and then just wait for everything to be perfect and everything to come to you, because that won't always happen. Yeah. Come on! I hear. Come I on. hear. I hear. Yeah, but it, Neymar it's is like- coming for the ball every time. Hazard, even though. He, I've had my differences with him. Not, 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 not personal. <laughs> but, but, <laughs> but, but I, I've, I've said what I've said about Hazard. But he doesn't really hide minus Champions League games. But he doesn't really hide. He's no, but they're two different players, Ace. No, but they're two different players, guys. Like ha- it doesn't like matter. Salah is an matter. attacker. He's a goal scorer. He's not a creator. He's not like Hazard. He's not a. He's not a Bro, playmaker. His his assist record says different. 
I don't and I don't even care about what kind of player you are. If you are playing bad and you're the best player, you you find a way to play good. You find a way to work out of it. This is a long run now where he hasn't mm-hmm. played good. He's just relies he's satisfied with his numbers. This is weak. Yeah. This is very weak. No, I, I don't know, I Mo. Am I yeah. off? Do you agree? No, nah, because well, even like the concept, even if he's just a goal scorer and that's all he should be, like that's what all he's known for. Then try to score a goal, bro. Get into good, good positions. You can't just hide out on the wing the whole time. He's essentially hiding, in my opinion. Like you, you oh, can't definitely, be out on definitely. the wing, seeing your team do poorly, and you're not trying to will them to to win the game. You're not trying different things. You're not trying something new. Like it, mm. it's clearly not working. I don't personally like the, the 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 switching tactics where Trent now is just. Although he was always kind of going in midfield before, but now he's literally just taking up Salah's spacing. Right where before Salah was a lot more, I guess, uh, inside, which is what my criticism was. And when you remember, we had the whole Hazard Salah debate, and I was saying guys always in the forward position. He's not there anymore. Mm-hmm. He's on the wing, and he has to operate like mm-hmm. a winger, but he's not. He's hiding from the ball. And if that's mm-hmm, not yeah. what you're going to do, then go back to playing the inside forward role. Mm-hmm. Go look for the ball. Try to try to try to score. Try your stupid shots that you always do. But try things. Mm. I think that the in the game, this past game, there was one play where he drove at Tommy, Tomiyasu, got by him, took a shot, and then the conversation went, wow, yeah, it's, you know, it's the uh, first time while Salah's has done this. You know, yeah. and like that, that's what you want at least. If you're going to go out on the wing, run at people. Don't just pass mm. it back. Lose the ball. Try some things. But he's, he's I don't know. He Ever since ever since uh, the most Santa comments, he hasn't been the same. That's basically... Yeah. Honestly, no. It's it's the one like you got paid and got the big contract and hasn't been the same since. It's very similar to Aubameyang. And this is a question I wanted to ask you guys: like, would you give the contract that Salah's given to a thirty-year-old plus if you were the manager of a football club? Because right now it's not looking good for thirty-year-olds not named Benzema, Lewandowski, and Messi. You obviously, you always Obico. do, right? You always do. The reason being is that you can't predict the future. And at this point in time, at least at the time that they give him the contract, he was performing, right? Mm-hmm. So if, if if this is your best player and then his contract is up and you're going to say, okay, you know what? I can't let him go for free. And he wants to bag. He's performed up to this point. So it's not even necessarily you give him the money based on the future. You give the money based on what he's done already in this contract as well. Like, uh, I agree. I think, I, think, I, think, I think Alfonso Davies said that like somebody clipped, clipped him uh, last season when he was on like a Twitch stream and he was talking about just, just give Salah his money, you know, like look, look what he's done. Look at his numbers. And yeah. you can't not give Salah his money after what he did last season. He had a generational, like once in a lifetime season. Half a season though. Half, ha- season half, half a season, but the numbers were good enough for a full season. And you can't not no. give a guy that much money, especially when you get into like the logistics of the fan pressure and, you know, the marketing and all that, you know, you can't not yeah. give him money, but it's up to him to perform now. And he's just not doing it. And this mm-hmm. isn't what people want to see. Like Liverpool, they have so many holes. Like, you know, even if you're just a goal scorer, your team needs something more. Why well, you could, if anybody's going to have the initiative, it has to be you. Yeah. Not anybody. It has to be you. Why is Luis Diaz running through five players every game and scoring game winners? Why is he doing and that? He's out. And now he's out. And now he's out. Yeah. And very, very sad news. He's actually out after the World Cup. This is going to no. be a great World Cup for him. I think he's going to make it right before the World Cup, if I'm not mistaken. I've I, I, I no, seen a report about sure. after, but... 10 yeah. weeks. 10 weeks, it's yep. 10 he's weeks, missing so. it. Yeah, yeah he's probably missing it. So he's, he's, he's not on the plane anymore. Damn. So it's like, you know, like this this isn't looking good. Yeah. And again, well, need- after- <laughs> go, go ahead. Go ahead, Mo. Go- no, I, I was going to change the subject because I was going to say Jurgen Klopp, after all, all we've talked about Salah, Trent and stuff, he's going to come up with more excuses. He's had many excuses after the Arsenal defeat, one of many similar to, oh, injuries. And one thing I was talking about with Lee Ban recently on the Discord, we were saying that the media are so quick, so quick to find excuses for Liverpool every single time. They're like, oh, Liverpool this, injuries this, this and that. Injuries. Yeah, yeah. Oh. they'll bring up all the info, but they'll how can you not feel sorry up. for Liverpool? They're saying stuff exactly, like that. exactly. It's and, so corny. It's it's like they didn't. It's like they forgot they spent all this money. Like they don't have Jota on the bench. They bought Thiago. They bought Nunes for a hundred million, who's not even show, performing. Sometimes on the bench, sometimes not. I, I'm sorry, man. I just I, I'm I'm tired of the excuses, but I do that, think we need boys. We need to talk about Jurgen Klopp for a little bit. Because the 4 2 4 against Arsenal was kind of crazy, to be honest. I was going to say, man, to be honest, the problem with this Liverpool team, I'm not even going to say it's Jorgen Klopp. I'm going to say that it's still the midfield. They still, the problem was they needed midfield players. It was so obvious they needed midfield players, and they brought in 
Arthur, Arthur, Arthur who got injured. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. The, the, no the surprise there. Was, Did he ever play? Like, no. 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 Uh, no, he sad. liked the bench, if I'm not mistaken. One of the champions. Oh, I don't think so. I swear he did. Even still, so. regardless, he's, he wasn't going to solve your problem, right? They left it so yeah. late. They needed a midfield. I understand that they're, they're, they're trying to get Jude next year, but you still needed more than Jude. They, and now Jude the might go to Madrid, too. Jude might exactly. go to Madrid. Perez has exactly. his eye on him. He's saying, exactly. Modric, yeah, Jude's in the wings, so why not? Exactly. And why on earth would Jude come to Liverpool? right now over madrid why he can play beside camavinga and and valverde for a decade (laughs) why would he come to regardless of that they knew they needed a henderson replacement for a long time now right and you can clearly tell that it's affected trent and it's affecting Salah. they're not at their best and not because of them like it's not because somebody else obviously they they need to perform better but having a henderson made them or not made them but really gave them a nice like cushion to perform to their best, you yeah. know, it gave them some security, right? It allowed it allowed Trent to bomb forward, it allowed Salah to cut in. It, Henderson was picking Salah out in great positions, and now that he's kind of he's lost his legs, you, like it's affecting your team. That whole right side is terrible, and that used to be their best like, in terms of like production. It used to be their Attack, best side. Yeah, yeah, I hear that. I hear that. Even Let's that not, not forget Robertson's out. Robertson's, hey, Robertson's out. out too, and there's still Simicast who's good. But he's not Robertson. Simicast is re- a lot of people rated him highly last season. I They're, did. They, I did. You know, you did. Many other people said he might deserve to start over Robertson last season. So that's not a bad backup. So I don't want to hear that excuse. They have Gomez off the bench too. Yeah, Konate on the bench. Like you, they have quality. So I, I'm, I'm, not with, I'm, I'm not but with the Liverpool these, excuses. I'm sorry. Named all center backs and fullbacks, not a midfielder. Which yeah, is what no, they need. Yeah. They need a midfield. They have no transition. Yeah. They have nothing. And on top of that, this is a very offense. aging midfield. Yeah, and it's like what Tiago's how old? Thirty-one, maybe now. Henderson is in his thirties. Same as stay well, healthy. So. Yeah, He's in and out yeah. of games. Yeah, facts. same with Fabinho. If, it, but I, I don't, I don't want to say this because they're for professionals. But if I'm a midfielder, a starting quality midfielder, if I'm one of those middle three, I don't. I'm not even in a rush to get back because I'm going to come back and get slated for playing half injured because I'm playing beside players who aren't used to the system or, you know, aren't good enough just to, to stand beside me. Mm. You know, like it's it's bad, but... And there's nothing to fight for. Let's be honest. Yeah. If they were performing this bad, if they were performing like like they were, they were just on the edge of the, the like top four or whatever, yeah, you come back. You risk it, but if you're mm-hmm. 10th, I'm not coming back. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm not doing that now. Let me be healthy. We'll try again next season. So. This is just near are like yes. most most like top well big like let's let's say big six clubs like other than Chelsea who have like a million signings everybody seems to be short on midfield nowadays like I can say Arsenal City, are City, City, uh, City uh, other thing but like they don't have that Kevin no, De Bruyne Mo, backup in Bernardo though your just, short isn't short though I'll be honest Chelsea short, short is not short. It was an injured short. Well, your backups are like Gallagher can play there if you need him to. So that's like, this season. I, I was saying last season. I was saying last season, not this season. Last, last season, season yeah. I was talking about. No, but if you guys uh, have guys like Loftus Cheek just sitting there, that's not yeah. short, short. You know what I mean? Like, it's not Virginia like no, this, season, this season. I agree with you. Yeah, no, yeah. this season, I'm talking about, I was talking about last season when Conte, no. Eugenio, and Cole just had their, their bits where they're just all out. Yeah, so, if you're yeah, missing yeah. three starting midfielders, then yeah, that's that's a different situation. But, um, but that's, I think, but I think that's not the situation for Liverpool, is what I'm saying. Yeah, right? it's that's not. Because not, yeah, Fabinho was on the bench. Like, so. It is what it is. But Boys, yeah, let's, I let's, think, let's, let's, no, no. I think we have to. We have an elf in the room, and I have to be an adult about it. Talk about Trent. Oh, now you want to talk about it? Eh? Now you yeah, want to talk have, about it? Listen, don't say that. I want to talk about it when I brought it up. When you were trying to move on, you were trying to move on. You were trying to move on. I brought it up. This is me being. Not dodging. We don't got time for this now. We've been on this Arsenal Liverpool for a long time. Bring it up next week because I'm sure it'll come up again. I'm sure it'll get exposed again. Well, he's injured. He's injured. He's injured and it looks bad too. Oh, he's injured. Oh, he's actually, missing the big one. Yeah, yeah he, got, he got he got hooked in the game. He got hooked in the, the game. halftime. Yeah, uh, did yeah because, and Klopp said, Gomez. yeah, him and Diaz. He said it doesn't look good for either in the post conference. Yeah, they were but defending honestly, better on their by by the way when he came off. Just saying, Tomorrow honestly, was struggling anyway, defense, but. Just, just last thing, last thing on Liverpool. I think that they just have to get through these next five games. Some of their players aren't going to the World Cup. Mm-hmm. Take that time, rest, and we might see a resurgence in January slash December. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. All right, yeah, yeah. All right, let's move on. United Everton. Good game. Kind of boring. Nothing crazy. Cristiano Ronaldo back on the scoring sheet. I think it's his first goal in the league this season. Second goal. Yep. Second yep. goal. I think he got one yep. in Europa. It was a good goal. It was a good goal. Don't get me wrong. He had a good performance. But 
I don't know if it's just me or I'm just still not convinced with United this season. Like I, I didn't see anything that would be like, yo, like other than Casemiro, I thought his performance was more than really good. Maybe I'm a little biased over there, but I just mm, wasn't, I wasn't too impressed with United in that Everton match. Honestly, I would say United are kind of building something and you can kind of see it. I don't think it's all the way there, but you're definitely seeing little things that might give you hope if you're a United fan. For example, Rashford looks like a different player. Or maybe it's the same player that he used to be, but, you know, you can see him working hard. You can see him, you know, hustling. He's getting on the score sheet, you yeah. know, scoring goals. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, w- I would say that that's a positive. Anthony or Anthony, mm-hmm. definitely someone we have to talk about. Three games, three yeah. goals. And all these goals are being very, very well taken. Yeah. So now that brings us to something that I seen on Twitter. Anthony did this in his first three games. I'm a Jaden Sancho fan, but how long mm. has Sancho had? And he hasn't shown anything close to this. Mm. And technically, he's really played the same him, position. Hmm? I don't think that's fair to him. He had to deal with Ole Why? last season, uh, uh, bro. I don't, I don't think that's fair because dealing with Ole, and they're also not the same. Type, they're not the same profile of a player. You know, they didn't yeah. play to Sancho's strengths last season. Yeah, I think I just think that this actually speaks to the fact that. You need pace to be a winger in the Premier League. You need yes. it. If your name's yes. not Mares, you need it. Yes. You need some form of dynamism where you can beat a player or you can make quick movements and act out of it. Yeah. Like Anthony, he can cut back and shoot in like the same millisecond. Sancho yeah. is a little bit more of a wind up. I don't think he has a strength to really like hit a ball that hard, you know, just from a standstill while these other players, they do. And if they don't, they have the pace to get by players and make it happen. Yeah. You know, another thing with Sancho, like he just seems so focused on winning the ball and trying to, you know, focus on the press where he just like looks dead tired after and he cannot do anything when he gets the ball. Like he can't beat defenders, beat defenders one-on-one. He can't show that pace that we've seen in Dortmund back in the day. I don't know. It's just Sancho is not it right now. It's not looking good. He scored some, he had some glimpses of nice goals this season, but like in terms of performances and the Sancho, we all expected to come into the Premier League and do bits. It's not there, man. It's not there. Mm-hmm. I don't like what I'm seeing. Yeah. yeah. You guys want to quickly talk about Everton and Iwobi's goal? <laughs> I knew that was going to be brought up. I knew Iwobinho. it. Yeah, he's killing That was a field. brilliant strike. Brilliant strike. Yeah. And Art, and you said you wouldn't take him back. I wouldn't I would take, take him back. Th- Trust me, I, I've seen I many things from Iwobi. I would take him no, back. I would take, no, no. He did, he did give up the ball for the third goal, but still, I don't care. I would take him back. Yeah. I and he's playing multiple positions. Like, like Everton need to make changes, and then he literally slotted back to right back in the second half. And honestly, the game kind of did it there. Like, fair enough. Like, he's, perform- mm-hmm. he's performing well in the midfield, but it's just not. I'll never... I'm good. <laughs> I'm good, yeah. bro. <laughs> no, you know, it's another thing. I, 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 I was talking about this, someone on Discord. I can't remember who, but um, I was talking about Wobi and why I would not want him in Arsenal. And honestly, mentality, like, I don't, I don't think he's there. Like, I don't think he's, I don't think he's an alpha, man. Sorry to say, wow. I, I, don't, I don't think he's alpha. I don't think he's, you I don't think he has, he has it in him to be. A, 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 hear me out. Like, is, I, I feel like he can't deal with pressure. And he dealt with a lot of pressure at Arsenal. A lot. Like, we knew there was talent there. The boy scored a bicycle kick in the Europa League final. You know, like we all we all know there was talent, but we didn't we doubted the potential because of his mental state of how he approaches the game. Like I don't I don't think he was there. And even for Nigeria, Nigerians are saying the same thing. Like he got dropped from the international squad, you know, because his performances was just like he he looks out of it in the games. But I don't know. Everton is looking good right now. It is what it is. But I don't think he can do that in a big club. But then, my, uh, yeah, my, my question then becomes, it will be, that's what you said about him. What are you going to say about Walcott? What are you going to say about um, Welbeck? What are you going to say about yeah. Ox, Ramsey? Like what? how many players have you guys propped up to this positions? And then don't say don't you do guys. You say, don't say I'm you guys. They, I'm going to say you guys because Arsenal as a fan base does this. We prop up these, these, these players to a certain status and then when they don't achieve that, or they fall short of it. They're not strong enough now. They're not mentally good enough. That's I, mean, uh, I definitely said that about Walcott. Hundred percent. Fair enough. He scored yeah, a lot so of goals for us. If, but if it's a whole bunch of players, at what point does it become? We're just putting too much on players, not just letting them just be them. I, I I'll be. That, I'll, like, I'll be honest. We are witnessing an absolute monster with Saka, and I think yeah. that has changed the past and how we viewed it. We thought they were weak, and I think Mo's correct, but. Saka is I mean, an anomaly and Saka has broken down barriers and taken so much so that other people don't have as much of a load to take. Mm. I think Saka mm-hmm. came at the right time. Look at where Saka no, came. I, 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 I think so. Saka came. No, but look, Saka came into a team 
that wasn't in Champions League. They're 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 in Europa. They're fighting for Europa places. Whereas you look Chokes at Iwobi, you look at Walcott, you look That's at even guys, more pressure. You consistently, but you guys are consistently top four with aspirations to win the league. You know what I mean? Every season you guys came to the league saying, we're going to win, we're going to win, we're going to win. When Saka came, that wasn't the aspirations. The aspirations no, most right. Most right. We, yeah. Oh, we had, I feel like we had so much pressure because the fan base was so divided. But you yeah, also but have to remember, Mo. It, it was on the man. It wasn't the Wenger pressure. It wasn't the Wenger pressure. The players, and specifically the players and Wenger. If they didn't perform, yeah. it was them. You guys no, are no, trash. That, you guys aren't good enough for this club. But when it the, came the down Wenger to the Wenger era pressure, go ahead. I was going to say, when no, it came to Saka, it, 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 was, it, was, it became, it wasn't, oh, Saka, you're not good enough for this club. You're not good enough for the badge. It became, the Cronkies got to go out. They're not investing. They're not this. Like, the pressure has left the players. No, I, but so- I, Saka was good enough to alleviate the pressure. I don't think pressure left. He took the pressure and dissipated it. Mm-hmm. Bro, and he, he's, that, he's, he he's been to... playing good since he started playing for Arsenal. It's yeah, been like two and a half years now. And I agree and disagree with you, Mo, and for one reason, because Saka had to take the show, the whole, carry the back of like Arsenal's pressure for the last two seasons single handedly. Aubameyang and all these top not single handedly uh, because, because, because you look at, you look at who had around him. He had a bummy around him who took a lot of the pressure, right? You and, also had, and left it also, and, and threw it at him. Had, threw it at him. Had, fair enough. But you also had, um, oh, what's his name? Uh, 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 Reese, uh, what's his name? What the hell's his name? Reese Nelson, uh, right. Reece Nelson, Reece Nelson. Yeah. you had Reese Nelson, and you had he the other man that took his mother out. But you also had the other man that took his mother out. Never took any pressure. Award. They did. They were they were talking points for you guys. They were, they were guys were coming to your academy because they didn't end up performing. But look at how they, their careers turned out, and nobody's really gave them that same pressure that they gave Iwobi. You get what I'm saying? No, no. Iwobi came walked, at the walked. worst time. No, no. I think, I think, I think I'll admit that. Iwobi came at the worst time because I'm just recalling the way people used to abuse that guy was not normal. Like yeah, for it was a guy on your own tough. team, it was crazy. Yeah. And I was not one of those people. I can adamantly say that. You guys can vouch. I was not one of those people. I was a Wobi guy. That's my guy. Yeah, I never got that. still my guy. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I like him. I like him. I like him. I don't love him, but I like him. I like Fair him. enough. No, but I, I, you guys are right. It was The timing was pretty harsh on him. And he was. we didn't have a winger at the time. That's why we signed mm-hmm. Pepe after. And the right wing mm-hmm. spot was a very weak link in the Arsenal squad. And him not performing really hurted us that year. We finished fifth with Emery so yeah I don't know it was um, a lot of pressure for a young guy but I I, I I genuinely believe he was in an alpha I don't think he could he couldn't like that's, handle that's, it uh, okay I think I think it's safe to say he couldn't handle it that pressure at that time but that pressure wasn't normal and also he was young so those are very reasonable reasons for why but I Fair think enough. I think there's a lot of Arsenal talk you guys want to talk uh Chelsea quickly I just want to ask Mo like another win another good performance by the team a lot of different goal scorers. Um, what, do, what, do, what do you think of Potter so far? I'm liking the attacking intent. Um, I'm liking the four at the back. Uh, I think mm-hmm. I was right with, with Chalaba coming in. I think he he, yeah. he might have had a better game than Fofana's had for us at this point. He was um, good. He was really good. And I'm liking it so far, but I feel like this happens all the time with new managers. We're also facing a Wolves team that was like... Really poor. Yeah. Just really woeful. They- they just sacked the manager, sack manager yeah. Yeah. and and the new manager doesn't look that great. Uh, shout out Diego Costa. I like the fact that you know he's still he's still moving. Um, <laughs> and then moving on to the Milan game, they didn't have Theo and they didn't have Mignon, so it's kind of like we beat Milan three nothing. And it was a, initially we were struggling the first fifteen minutes, but then after that, when we scored our first goal, we, we just controlled the game. But yeah, it, you it guys bought them. Y'all bought it. Them. Y'all bought it. It felt kind of like not complete, in my opinion, because Theo, who's undoubtedly their best player, wasn't in the game. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? I think that that really affects the Milan team. I think it kind of they don't revolve around him as much as they used to, but he's still very important to that side, especially with progressing the ball. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Uh, don't mean to cut you off, Mo, but did you guys hear what Rafael Leao said about a certain Chelsea player? But, oh, about Reese James, the, being the, the yeah. best in the world. Come on, yep. man! I've been telling you guys this. I thought I've that was been fake. You guys, this. No, it's not real. It's real. I thought it's I'm real. pretty sure he said it. Uh, he said it, he said it's a sure. difficult opponent. He he's he's come across or something like that. So far, yeah, uh, that's very very high praise. But he's also facing a team that's better than them. I would say Chelsea is a better team than Milan right now. So they have better. You're depth. also facing. I mean, they're Milan, better than anybody that they'll face in Syria. But here's the thing: Milan's face. He has faced Hakimi. He's come True. across Hakimi. Hakimi's not a good right back. That defender, I mean, he's not an excellent defender. He might, he might, all I'm saying is he's he's he came across a guy who, when he left, was the considered the best right back in the world. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. All I'm saying is, well, this this re, this re, this re James agenda. I've been on that. Like it's too late. We don't want. No, you, were early. It's done. you were early. It's done. You were early. You were early. You were early. What did yeah. you think of Pulisic? I thought he had a game. He played well. He played well. But um, are you guys surprised though? Because we knew he had that in this game. I just feel like he's been disrespected. Like he's never got to play. Pulisic. Yeah, he's always he's had not that been disrespected. Game. He's not been yeah, disrespected. He has. He's been no, playing he has right. Not. He's been playing right wing back, left wing back for to, uh, Thomas Tuchel. Uh, Come on, I bro. mean to to kind of disagree with you. Um, Raheem Sterling played left wing back for Potter in the first game. <laughs> True. <laughs> so, but Come on. still, Come man, on. still, like I, I don't like what, the glimpse we've seen of Pulisic under Lampard. I, like it was kind of scary, and he just never the problem. The problem with Pulisic was health. It wasn't like that too. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. The guy would go on even with with, with uh, Frank Lampard. He'd go on runs, two three games, yeah. play really well, and then get injured. Go to US, yeah. go to the US game, come back injured from international duties. And then it's yeah. like, bro, like there's no consistency in playing him because he's always in and out. And then when when Tuchel took over, he was injured for the beginning portion of Tuchel being there. Mm-hmm. And then Tuchel found form with Mason Mount playing that left attacking mid area, and it just he kept it. Yeah, you know, I'm, but, I'm not mad at. It. What happened with Pulisic or even even uh, Ziek, who wanted more playing time, bro? Kick rocks, perform in training, mm-hmm. then you'll start. Mm-hmm. Uh, one last thing I want to bring up with Chelsea: the Kepa, uh, well, Kepa starting over Mendy, and it seems like Potter is a big fan of it right now. How many games has it been so far? Three games under, three or four games under Potter, mm-hmm. and Mendy hasn't seen a single minute. Is it over for Edward Mendy? I mean, Mendy just came back from injury. He was just on the bench know, the but, other day. Yeah, but like still. Like you thought I mean, he, the big game just came back. Edward Mendy I mean, is gonna the, start. The thing is, it's, the thing it's is, been, bro, he's been he's Edward, been back for a while, Mo. Here's the thing though. When Potter took over, Mendy was injured. Kepa had to play. And Kepa's performed every single game. Yeah. He's looked really good every game. I've looked I have looked at this and said, bro, just passing wise is definitely way better than Mendy. It's not even a question. Mm. Oh yeah, right? that's a fact. And then the one goal that they did score, that he got scored on or whatever, and like in the last two games. The last three games, it was just it was like a top bins thing he couldn't control. So like even the stops that he's been making, the saves he's been making have been ones we required from him, and he did it. Mm-hmm. He's been coming for crosses. He's been he's been finding players on the offensive side, which Potter likes. He likes a goalkeeper that uses their feet, yep. and it looks good. Yeah. Mendy's my guy. I like Mendy. He came at the perfect time <laughs> at Chelsea. Look like shit, and we needed a ball stopper, and he did that. Yeah, but Kepa just looks good. Yeah, he's looking good right now. I honestly, it might have been like the same, like we were talking about, like it will be. It might have been just been a bad time for him to start for Chelsea at that time because there was a lot of pressure on him as well. If you're going to say the same for it will be, it was a lot of pressure. No, it was the Lampard, bro. Lampard, it was Lampard too, but like. Had no defensive sense, bro. You didn't know how to set up a defense, like how to set up the defense on transition. So they're yeah. just leaking chances, and people want you. I'm gonna shoot from distance. Mm, that's true. That's true. All right, the boys. Let's let's move on to our Q and A sessions. We got a couple questions, so we're gonna get started. First question from our brother Omar Agra. Top five managers of the Premier League season so far. Well, we got a uh, Arteta. That's, Arteta. That's without doubt. For Pep. Sure. Pep. Uh, uh, Eddie Howe. Spalletti, Spalletti uh, from Napoli. Premier League, you said right. Oh, Premier League. My bad. My bad. Premier League. I think Eddie uh, Howe's there. Um, yeah. Yeah. Conte. Even though I, I, I don't want to say it, but at the end of the day, they're picking up points. <sighs> we didn't talk uh, about Tottenham, but I don't... <sighs> they're picking up points. You, can, you can't argue with points. it. Yeah, they're four points off the top, but like it's the performances aren't it. The performances are not there. Like, performances aren't yeah. it, but they're collecting points, and that's all yeah. Conte cares about. That's true. That's true. And it's, it might be scary if they start playing good finally, and, you know, and then they start to take on... Can still continue getting points like this, but honestly, I don't know. honestly, I have Lampard in my top five managers so far. I was gonna nah, say, nah, I was gonna put him in there. Nah, I'm, 100%, I'm not 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 
Brent, yeah, they're yeah, six yeah, yeah. right now in Newcastle, but they're they're collecting points. They're collecting points. They're collecting points. I think they're yeah. going to get Europe. You never know. I think so. You never know. I think so. Liverpool continue playing the way they are, and, and one of and they did, one, one of us drop out of top six. Yeah, we'll we'll see. We'll see. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm fine with that. Arteta. Pep, no Conte? No Conte. Bro, Conte I, I, I definitely put Lampard top four. Yeah, I, don't I put Lampard top, top three. He deserves to be there. I'm, because I, that's, that's I, a team I, I that keeps in relegation, bro. That's a real mm. bro. Their squad is not good. Their squad no, is not, not bro. Not at they've all. spent money. They spent money. Not, Maybe no, another time haven't. we talk about Everton. No, yeah, they have. They spent so much money on Premier League rejects, but that's a bro, whole different story. Bro, they have Liam Wape as their striker. Yeah, they chose to sign him. They could have went anywhere else and signed him. He's not playing bad though. Yeah, he's supposed he to be their backup. Yeah. He's supposed to be their yeah. backup. He's not supposed to be their Calvert starter. Lewin just came back. Demari, bro, they, there's a lot. Bro, Lampard, Lampard really shifted. It will be into midfield, and oh, he's geez. succeeding. You know how nuts that he is? did. What Wenger never did. <laughs> <laughs> I hear that. All right, next question from LA underscore Joker Arsenal. Oh, I think it was a statement Arsenal winning it all. Oh, I mean, I, I'm not gonna do that yet. I'm not gonna do that. Oh, I'm, not that. I'm not doing yeah. that. I'm not doing that. I'm, I'm, I don't want to get. I don't want to. We we need bigger. to beat City once, and we need to beat Chelsea twice for me to believe yeah, that. Yeah, Ooh. but I, I <laughs> personally don't think. I personally don't think anyone's beating City. But, I'll be uh, honest. I need to see that. Uh, next question from our boy Ross: Is Potter really cooking, or is this momentum from Tuchel's influence? Mm. Both. New manager bounce. Both. We'll see in like after the, uh, like by February or March. We'll have a good gauge. But right now, it's just yeah. a new manager bounce. Yeah. And it's kind of, honestly, it's yo, this might be good timing for Potter because the World Cup's coming. Obviously, now you just see how the results go. You have a lot of fixtures, try out the players. But World Cup coming, the guys who are not there, you know, figure it out. Get some training going up. Play the way you want to play. You know, so it might it might work out. It might work out. I think it's, you never know. You never know. But let's move on. Next question from Big Fish. Who's your way to early January targets? Name, please. Uh you want to save for just for your club? Uh, anyway. Yeah, yeah. Well, Arsenal need a midfielder and a winger, backup, backup left winger. Oh, all right, all right. I, I got winger. Winger, I want Trossard. Oh, that's good. That's that's, that's a realistic one. And winger, <laughs> I mean, in midfielder, I know. Brandon I know they just charge heavy for that though. For Trossard, yeah. Mid-season? Oh, definitely, definitely, yeah. definitely. And and midfielder, I know he just signed for Everton, but I want Onana. I like him a lot. Oh, I like that one. I like that one. I actually was gonna. We'll bring never him get him. We'll never get him. But yeah. on my unrealistic target. He's can't think of anybody else. He's a ball. I can't think of names, honestly, right now. I mean, I wouldn't mind Douglas Luiz from Massa Villa. I would not want him. I don't mind I don't him. Him. I personally don't mind I don't him. Want him. Which I personally see happening. He might he might get him. He doesn't raise the levels. He doesn't hey. raise the levels. That's what we said about Jesus last season and all these other Brazilians. I so, did not say that about like, Jesus. Uh, Jesus is my guy. Many others did, but uh Mo. I mean, you already I, have enough honestly, signings, no right? <laughs> yeah, no you're good. No more signings. I mean, I wouldn't want him. Like, I want him, obviously, but I don't think it's realistic for January. Yeah. And Do you guys think United need signing so for this winter? Bro, if they're not going to play start Fred, they need somebody to be a third midfielder. Get that Bruno guy out of here. Put Erickson up top. Like, put him at the I camp agree. position or something or the most forward midfielder. Get him out of here. Pack him up. Get somebody that can play with Casemiro. Wait, why doesn't Ten Hag play Fred and Casemiro together? Like, they don't I play don't in Brazil know. together. I don't know why he's not. What I does he see? Together. I don't know. Something in training, maybe. But get a midfielder to, to put in that three and, and pack up Bruno, bro. That man is not a footballer. <laughs> Damn. All right. Next question from Big Fish. When are all three of you goats hopping on five on five? Hey, I mean. Give us the I'm drop. Oh, let's see. We could do like a football versus uh, so, uh, basketball thing. You never know. I mean, maybe um, we can get you guys on the pod too one day. Why not? Let's do it. We'll see. We'll talk. We'll talk. Let our, let our uh, talk to our manager. Well, to our manager will talk to your managers. Okay. But next Bro, question from Adam. Natural, that works for you. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right? <laughs> <laughs> We're getting there. We're getting there. <laughs> We're getting there. <laughs> but next question from Adam. I think you guys should give Arif his flowers for Holland being top scorer this season. Ah, huh? I was the only one who said it. Yeah, you guys said Holland wouldn't be top goal scorer. I said sure. if he's injured, he won't be. Nah, you guys were pretty sure he was going to play. Not gonna play gonna thirty-eight be. games. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah well, has he 30. played thirty eight games yet? No. I mean, he's, listen. No don't make me. Regardless. Don't make me refer back to the first episode where I said Holland over Mbappe. That's cool. That's cool. But don't make me do that. All I'm saying, Holland doesn't run this Holland, Mbappe train. No pun intended. Thirty eight games. He needs half a, half the season. He's still scoring think, more than the most he's got. I think we all can agree, bro. This is nobody expected. This. I think we can just agree on that. Yeah, yeah. Regardless Everybody's lying. Not, 
There's no way anybody expected this. I mean, a pacey striker, a tall striker in the Premier League. Young, Bro, he has, I what, think. 14 already? Was he at 14, yeah. nine games in? Yeah, 15 now. 15 now. No, 15? but Champions yeah, League, he scored like 15, how many? 15, 15, 15 in the Prem. I'm just talking about 15 Premier. in the Prem. Nine games in, nobody expected that. Yeah, it's crazy. That's, like, that's almost Ronaldo numbers, 2013, 2014. This is crazy. Yeah. I think yeah, the, uh, the next... guy that did the math for it, he said you need, uh, he needs to conti- continue this whatever, four games, four goals a game or something like that, and then he'll get beat Ronaldo's record. Something like yeah. that. I don't know, something stupid. Let's pray, let's, let's pray, let's pray. Yeah, you're right, you're right. I think I've seen a ESPN tweet. Uh, if he scores 40 goals a season from until like 2034, like he ha- then like he'll that. match yeah. Ronaldo's record, which is kind of yeah. nuts. But next question from Adam. What is happening to Liverpool? And I think Mo needs to take back what he said about Arsenal. Damn, Adam's coming here with the facts. But I hear what he's saying, like with uh, Liverpool, like, I mean... I think he's what he's trying to get at is like the Liverpool look too bad. Like, are we is Arsenal really was it really a great performance from Arsenal or Liverpool are just looking trash? Oh, a bit of both, a bit of both. We yeah. we we played well, but it's not like they didn't have glimpses. They were very very clinical. I, I didn't yeah. think they had that many chances, but for Mino, brilliant finish, Nunes, mm-hmm. brilliant timing on the run, and we know that's what they can do. They have top quality players, but we just we just beat them straight out. So yeah, mm-hmm. a bit of both. Mm-hmm. Um, next next question from Adam. Do Barca make the group? Now, they got a big game that's coming up against Benfica. They are right now, I believe, third. I think oh, by Inter. the time this episode comes... Is it Inter, Inter. the next one? It's Inter. It's Inter. Inter. Oh, I'm tripping. I'm tripping. My bad. Yeah, so... If they lose that, they are, if I'm not mistaken, they're, yeah, they're, they're going to be third right now. They're three points behind Inter right now. Bayern's at top. My bad. I meant to say Bayern. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I this don't is believe in Inter, part. though. I don't believe in Inter, though. I feel like they might pull through, like just close second. To, like, this is on the so last tight. Game. This is so tight that I don't even know. No, if they lose Inter, that's it. If they lose Inter, oh, really? that's it. Yeah, 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 because they're, they're, right now, Bayern is at nine, Inter's at six, Barca's at three. If Barca lose to, to Inter, Inter's at nine, bro. Like, they're, they're not, they're, they're not going to win. The, they, even if they win the next two games, if Bayern draw, they're out. Hold on. Okay, so I was mistaken. I thought Barca was facing Bayern this week, so they're facing Inter again. Yeah, and then they got El Clasico as well this week. This is I don't know. This is not they're looking out. good they're for out. Barca. They're going to Europa at the best. That's crazy. Best. If they lose, I they hope have so. To be I Inter. hope so. Actually, I want them to go to no. Europa because I don't. I don't like want Barca, them in Europa. I don't want I don't, them against Arsenal. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I don't want them in Europa. I'd rather Inter. Man, you guys are top of the league. Have some confidence. No, I, I, I want I want Inter in Europe. No way. But I, I don't believe in Inter right now, man. They look poor as well. I, don't, I do not want to see Lewandowski again. <laughs> 10 2. <laughs> facts. Yeah, facts. That's very true. Very true. I want but yeah, I, I have them making the group just like right at the last day. Uh, next question from Excel underscore lavish. Can you please make an episode about Liverpool having two season wonder and going back to the trenches? I think we got a lot of City fans that follow us. I ain't gonna lie. I see a lot of City <laughs> I fans. I think he's leaving and bringing them. I know, right? <laughs> Levi has brought a lot of attention for us, honestly. But uh, I wouldn't say it's a two season wonder no, because they won the Champions League Three 2019. <laughs> Three seasons. Wonder. <laughs> Wait, when was it? When, the the season Madrid won and uh, Salah got injured. That was twenty eighteen, right? Yeah, the season before they, they finished, won the Champions League. Where did they finish in the table then? I think they just finished fourth, right? They second. I think they were second was that this, year. No, nah, I think the season after was second when they started being title contenders. Before that, I remember well, they just finished fourth by a bit. If I'm not mistaken, I think in the last four years they've had one point difference with Team City, so they've been definitely dominant. Yeah, I would say two season wonder. That's that's distant. <laughs> that's definitely distant. But uh, did you guys hear about the Klopp seven year curse? I don't know if you guys. No. Know. Yeah, yeah, it's so, cap, bro. I, I mean, well, it's looking like it right now. The seven years at Mainz, seven years at Dortmund. Now it's the seventh year at Liverpool. So it ain't looking good, bro. It's not looking good. I don't know. But uh, next question on our Discord from Wabisaka. What makes Tottenham a big club? Uh, the, the fact that Google's about to give them the, a couple hundred right. M's for naming rights. Oh, yeah. Them, yeah that they're makes about to yeah. the bag. I they're did not the, notice. And Why? their new yeah. stadium will have the NFL logo on it. <laughs> that I heard, yeah. I, heard. Yeah. I, I think they've already great. been doing NFL fixtures there. We, uh, maybe, they have been, even yeah. in the past. Yeah, so that's crazy. Uh, I didn't know about the Google thing, but... Uh, but yeah, nah, this thing is a Tottenham, man. You just, the silverware's got to come in, man. It's got to come in sometime soon. And I feel like Tottenham keep getting excuses. They were like, oh, you know, it's Conte. It was going to work. And it was before it was, what's his name? Mourinho is going to come. He's a serial winner. Never came. Before, what was his name? Um, 
Pochettino still hasn't come. I don't know. They got to win trophies well, because they're a big club. Bro. The, the steps they've taken financially, bro, they're going to be scary soon. Oh, definitely. They've taken definitely. Some, yeah, bro. They're, they're doing a lot of behind the scenes financial work where in four or five years, they're going to be able to just spend a lot of money. Mm. Like a lot I mean, they're already, stuff. technically they already are. They no, but this is, that's just the beginning. I think this is just the yeah. beginning and Barca can definitely take a, a page out of their book. I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah. All right, la, uh, we got two more questions. Last uh, question from Ahmed Gunners: Are you guys afraid of what's to come? City question mark. Uh, I mean, I'm not afraid. I mean, City can catch uh, his hands, bro. No, this is the most confident I've been to face City, but they're still City. Like, it's not I, like. I, I, I have no, any I think, expectations of smoking them. I think it's going to yeah. be a good game. Yeah. I think everyone's forgot what happened last season when we got cheated at the Emirates. Remember the 2-1? The Rodri last minute. Was it 3-2 or 3? Three, uh, three, I think it was 3-2. Th- when freaking Rodri scored that last minute game winner and we got cheated. The Xhaka red card, which was absolutely bullshit. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Bernardo, yeah. that foul in the box or whatever. But I, I think people forgot that performance. We're coming for you. You guys can catch these hands. We ain't afraid of y'all. Holland who? Like, Gabriel Jesus, gang, gang. Yeah, he has but, to pass the Saliba oh, test. You said that so uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> no comment. Bro, you like, want to say any quieter? <laughs> like, bro. Uh, moving on. Uh, actually, we got a couple more questions that I just seen pop up. Uh, also from Ahmed. Is Arsenal lucky and capitalized earlier to later fall flat to fourth and clap hands? At least too many City fans that follow us, man. I don't many, mind. Bro. If we make Champions League, I'm happy. Now, but end of the day, it's still Arsenal Football Club. Like, we need silverware. Like, it has to come somewhere. We need Europa, silverware, Epic but Cup. if we make Champions League, I will be content because that's the expectation for the season. Yeah. I want yeah. to compete for silverware and make Champions League. Obviously, I, the expectation the ace, is to win, but yeah. come on. I'm realistic. The ace expectations change during the season, right? They definitely change. They definitely so. change. And once we're seven points ahead of City, like 20 games in, my expectations will change. But right yeah. now, the expectations have not changed. One Personally, point yeah. ahead yeah. against guys who win 17 games in a row. Yeah, I'm good. Personally, I'm good. top four is cool, but I just don't want Tottenham finishing above us again. I just I just, I just, just need one. I just need one. I don't care who a, finishes where. A, if we get to hear the Champions League songs, come on. Hmm. Come on. All right. Next question from Liban. What's your favorite goal scored by your favorite player and why? Mm. I, I'll, I'll start off. Ronaldo, Ronaldo Le Phenomena at World Cup 2006 against Ghana when he did the step over, beat the keeper, and finished with his right foot. I'll never forget that. I'll never forget that. I forgot how old I was when I watched that. I, I watched that so many times. I remember like YouTube was just like brand new then. I had to watch it. No, I didn't even watch it on YouTube. It was that other player. I forgot what it was called. Damn. Vimeo? I think so. Uh, it was so, something like that. I don't think that was the one. Daily Motion Player. Oh, Daily Motion, Daily Motion. Daily motion. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. I remember. I had a, I had like a bookmark. I, I kept watching that goal because I had a link from the World Cup site just to watch that. I, I, no, it was some Google link. I don't know, some random link I found. Yeah, but yeah, man, that's my one of my favorite goals of all time. I don't know. I have, I, I have, I think no. I have two. I don't, I don't really recall my favorite Terry Henry goal. Maybe the one where he was facing away from goal and he just picked up the ball and then just volleyed it. And then it went top right when he was on the left side. I don't know if you guys remember what I'm talking about, but he lifted the ball. He just turned and shot it. Mm. Um, That's one of my favorites. Another favorite that I have is probably Ronaldo's penalty against Juventus in the Champions League. Oh. When the Juventus penalty? made that, when yeah. he made that, the way that goal made me feel was different. Because uh, the, one, you've, the foul at the end of the... Yeah, yeah, on, on Lucas okay. Vasquez. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And and where Buffon was complaining, and then he got a red card, yes. and then the pressure was mounted. My heart was beating, and I was yeah. watching the game with a Juventus fan. And when he oh. scored that goal, the relief I felt different <laughs> level, different level. So yeah, no, that's just one of my favorite moments. But yeah, mm. Mo, uh, what's your favorite Jorginho I mean, I, goal? <laughs> oh, oh, um, no, nah, never mind. I, I can't even think yeah. of one. There's so many. Um, I gotta say, bro, the the Michael the Bison Etienne's goal against Arsenal was it like 06 or something where he just smacks it from like midfield, like feel forty yards. Can you remind me of who was it? it was. Etienne, Michael, Michael Etienne, bro. Oh, Etienne, right. bro, so and he back. banged that top bins from how far back? I can't remember. I, I'm, I'm you guys have a lot. Of, I've had a lot of black midfields. Sen Ramirez, John Obi Mikel. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Jesse's yeah. been yeah. African XI for not yeah, even man, we just there, African XI from day one. Nigerians. Yeah, we had like the most Africans 
uh, in the 2000s, bro. Bar none. Yeah. Yeah. Chris Dallas is taking notes, honestly. We made that popular, yeah. bro. I, I have another favorite goal, and it's by Neymar. It's when he was on Barca, when the ball was coming, and he lifted over. Like, basically, I think Suarez crossed it into him, and he picked mm. the ball up over himself, and then he, he volleyed it. Yeah. And we went, like, bottom left or bottom right. But, yeah, that's yeah. another favorite goal. Well, that's not bad. But, yeah, that's the end of the Q&A session. We're going to move on to Ace with the Ace stamp. So, I got three players this week. One of them is, like, the hot topic. Um... I'm, I'm, I don't want to say I'm early to him, but Cody Gakpo, my, he first really caught my eye Ooh. in an international game for the Netherlands. Mm. And the way he plays is so elite. Like, I know in the NBA, they talk about, oh, there's a new modern player about how, oh, everybody can shoot. The big men can shoot in football. It's the tall players are good with their feet. This guy yeah. is humongous and he has ridiculous feet and ridiculous finishing. He's very yeah. confident. He's his finishing is what I want Isak to get. His finishing and his confidence is what I want Isak to get. And he's yeah. just a brilliant player. Currently plays for uh, PSV, and he's definitely, definitely going to get a big move. Um, he's going to make United. United are gonna, definitely going to sign him. I was hearing yeah. online that he has, I'm not sure if this is true, but I did see it on Twitter, that he has just as many co- goal contributions or almost as close as Holland in terms of the Yeah, sense. no, he's an animal. He's an, He has yeah. uh, 13 goals right now. Which is crazy. It's just 13 crazy. goals and 10 yeah. assists in 16 games. So yeah. uh, he's Ten, not Hag seemed, Ten Hag seemed like he really wanted to make that move for Cody Gakpo, but we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> in nine games, he has nine goals and six assists in the Eredivisie. So yeah, yeah that's, that's crazy. That's, we'll that's what I'll say about him. Yeah. Uh, the next player is a very, very young player. He was born in 2005 and he plays for Bayern. And his name is Matthias Tell. He is just so dynamic and unstoppable bags of pace and he has ability with the ball too i think he's definitely definitely gonna be one to watch mm-hmm. i think i think if sane goes or one of these other wingers go coleman or or, or nabry if they end up going at some mm-hmm. point he's the guy who's gonna step up and he is gonna shine so that's mm-hmm. another player and the last player for the ace stamp he i don't even know how to describe him when i first seen him i thought he was ethiopian because of his last name. So his name is Mohamed Kudus, and oh. he plays for Ajax. And he, I don't know how he does it, but he'll be in a position that's very tight. He'll do a turn that looks loose, but he just travels with the ball. He has power, he has pace, and he has a rocket of a left foot. He mm-hmm. scored a crazy goal in the Champions League this season. He just scored another goal, I think, uh, last Ajax game. It was, it was off a deflection, but it was still a goal. Um, yeah, I think he's definitely going to be one to watch. He's 22 years old right now, and I think he might get a playing for his either. national team for Ghana as well, too. So yes, so it's going to be very, very exciting to watch. Um, yeah, so those are the three players for the A stamp. Yeah, it's been a long time coming. We haven't heard A stamp in a while. The fans uh, yeah. definitely missed it. Uh, we've been hearing a lot of requests for it. But thank you, yeah. Ace, for that. Other than okay. that, we'll see you all next week. Take care. Peace, yes, sir. Easy. <laughs>